morning and welcome to Abundant Living, a casual look into the Word of God with the preaching ministry of Dr. Gary Bradley, minister of the Mayfair Church of Christ, located in Jones Valley in Huntsville. The Mayfair Church is a loving Christ-centered church with a vision and a dream of sharing Jesus with the Tennessee Valley and the entire world. Every Sunday, Gary touches people's lives with the good news, and now he wants to share it with you one-on-one. So join us for the next few minutes as together we find the solutions to life's problems. Are you searching for those answers this morning? We believe the answers are there in God's Word and that each of us can have the abundant life God wants to give us. He reigns forever. And now your host, Dr. Gary Bradley. Good morning and welcome to Abundant Living. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday morning. Uh, kind of the beginning of my favorite day of the year, and that's Thanksgiving. And I thought we'd talk about the need for us to be more grateful. We'll, we'll get to that in just a few moments. Let me say first how much I appreciate so many comments made about the program. Uh, <laughs> I was in Cabela's the other day, and this very nice gentleman said he watches a program on television. Uh, I know that more people are watching because you're at home now like they're asking us to do, to stay at home when you can. But uh, my rating on Channel 19 is just out the roof. It's just gone uh, higher than it's ever been before. So while it's a bad time, a difficult time, a stressful time, yet it's provided for us a good time to visit together. And it's a highlight of my week for me to be able to come into your home or wherever you might be and talk about the most important thing in all the world, and that's the Word of God. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We have some things to talk about first. Remember now, the Mayfair Church has gone to one service, and uh, they begin their service at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. So if you uh, have been wanting to attend, and if you're obviously safe, or you feel safe in going, they make every precaution uh, in that huge auditorium Uh, They are making space for everyone. So feel free if you uh, feel safe to go and worship with the brethren at Mayfair. Today, right now, I am ready to preach at the uh, Howell Hill Church of Christ up in Tennessee. I'll be up there today. Uh, We start at 1030. So if you hurry, you can make the service and we'll be glad to have you. And then next Sunday, the 29th, is their homecoming. They planned to do this last March, but you know what happened back then. Uh, They had to postpone it because of the virus, and now they feel like they can do it. They have a new Family Life Center. It's a beautiful new building right next to their regular church building. And uh, we're going to have our worship service at 1030, and then we're going over there for a meal together and celebrate their 100th year. I certainly would like to know the history of how that church began, and, uh, and so I hope to find out between now and then how all that came about. So let me personally invite you to come and be with us during that time. We'd love to have you. And I know I have just fallen in love with the brethren at Howell Hill. They're just some of the finest people I think I've ever been around. And so we have to wear our mask and we have to wave and we have to do elbows or fists or whatever. But uh, it's the fact that we're together. And uh, hopefully this thing will soon pass. Let's pray fervently that the vaccine will be brought in and it'll be safe and everybody can get it. And then this thing will be in the past. It'll be over. But it's taught us a lot of lessons a lot of lessons we have learned. I think we found out how quickly this great nation can come to a halt. And uh, who knew, who had any idea what it would take to bring it to a halt? Uh, We have bad weather, we have (coughs) difficult things that come along, but never ever have we experienced anything like this. So we hope that you'll continue to be safe wear your mask, stay separated, stay out of big crowds, and let's let this thing catch, let's let the vaccine catch on and get, get, let us get through that. And let's get back to what, whatever normal used to be. It's kind of hard to remember, 
but nevertheless, we need to appreciate the fact that we're coming up on a day that has always kind of been my favorite because it's not about presents, it's not about shopping, it's not about decorating the house. It's not external. It's not about turkeys. <laughs> it's about being grateful. It's about being thankful. How many real thankful people do you know? Well, you say, well, Bradley, you, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've lost this year. And I understand that. We've lost, what, 3,000 Alabamians this year to the virus? No, I don't know what you've been through, and I'm sorry. But surely in reflecting on your lifetime and my lifetime, there are things we can be grateful for. We can be grateful even for people we don't have anymore. You know, I've told you before that, that my great-grandmother rode a mule, I don't know how far, eight or ten miles, in order to hear a man preach the Bible like she'd never heard preach before. And before long, she became a Christian and obeyed what the Bible says. And then her daughter did, my grandmother. She only had one child. And then my grandmother taught my mother. And then I was taught at home and at church. And so just follow the Bible, that's all. That's all, just follow the Bible. See, the Bible only makes Christians only anytime, anywhere. Go to Cuba, go to Honduras, go to Africa. Anywhere you want to go, take the Bible with you. And when you read it and apply it, then you obey it. What are you? Well, are you a hyphenated something else? No, you're just a Christian. You're just a Christian. Now then, as I've done for years, and I don't know how many thousands of these I've given away, it's entitled Preparing for the Holidays. While you and I will enjoy, hopefully, whatever, I hope we'll have small crowds because they're talking now about the danger of large crowds, but coming up on Thursday, let, let me encourage you to have a biblical Thanksgiving, and that's what we're going to talk about this morning, is how do you, I know you'll have a Thanksgiving, will you have a happy Thanksgiving, and will you have a biblical Thanksgiving? But before then, this is probably, this and powerful today is uh, the most powerful thing, most popular thing I've ever given away. It's written by my friend Randy Becton, who recently, well, a couple of years ago, passed away. I think he was in his second, he wrote this when he was in his second remission. So he knows about cancer. He's written a number of books. I've given them away on TV. He's, and I had a cancer support group at Mayfair, and we followed a lot of his material. But one day he sat down and, and talked about, he was in the hospital when he wrote this. And he wrote 12 ways that uh, you can survive, you can survive the holidays. I heard a statement the other day that I, I keep using over and over again because we all lose things. We all lose loved ones. We all lose our health. We all lose various things. And the statement was, you'll never get over it, but you will get through it. And I think that's something to remember during the holidays. I've always, when I was preaching regularly, I always uh, looked at a special time between Thanksgiving and Christmas because there's so much going on. There's so much shopping and, and visiting and traveling and, and the like, but not, in, not this year maybe. But normally those are 30 special days. And I, I think looking back over it, I think I used to preach on Jesus those four Sundays because um, it's so easy for us to get. We don't know that it was December the 25th, but we know it happened. Galatians 4.4, for when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a virgin, born under the law. So we know it happened and we need to be aware. But we celebrate it every Sunday because we have communion and we have 
uh, an opportunity to celebrate the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord. But let me get to these 10. Uh, many of you have asked for it before, but if you're watching for the first time and you don't know about this, then uh, all you got to do is call in in just a moment and we'll send you a, a copy of this 12 Steps to Survive the Holidays. And number one, I better get my glasses so I can read it. Uh, number one, he says, uh, you will expect a hard time. And he points out in a little paragraph here that it's okay when you know you're going to have a hard time when it doesn't hit you by surprise, when it doesn't hit you blindsided, when you understand that there's just going to be rough. There's going to be an empty chair at the table. And uh, this can be difficult. Or we're not able to get, you know, we're not able to go and visit. We're not able to have people over for our families over that we normally do. And so it can be a downer if we let it, but let's understand where we are. I hope and pray that next year be different. Next year we'll get back to that crazy rat race that we're in <laughs> uh, like, like we used to be in. But this year we got to be considerate and we got to be understanding. But number one, expect a difficult time. And that way it won't catch you by surprise. Number two, be easy on yourself. And I have talked about this in doing grief support uh, seminars. I have talked about it. Don't beat yourself up. Uh, the world is bad enough. And even, I'm sorry, but even sometimes our friends can be bad enough because they can, they can say things that really don't help. In other words, I know how you feel. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't know how I feel. Only I know how I feel in the Lord. And so, you know, be easy on yourself. Uh, number three, he says, uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Now, I think this is probably one of the most difficult points to get over, G hear me now, to good Christians. <laughs> because good Christians, I, I, I've heard it till I'm tired of hearing it. Uh, good Christians say, well, you know, I just don't want to ask for help. What you're doing is you're cheating somebody else out of a blessing. You're cheating other people out of an opportunity to do something for you. And so this idea of, I just, uh, I just don't want to ask for help. You need to ask for help. You know, that's what prayer is all about. And we talked about prayer last Sunday, that that's what I did I, I, a week before last. I, I prayed and I got up and went to vote because I taped the program on Tuesday. And so when you, ask, when you pray, you ask for help. See, that helps your pride. Your pride says, I can do it by myself. Your pride said, I can handle this by myself. I don't need to, I'll wait and hold, I'll wait and ask him for the big things. Well, <laughs> he wants to help with the little things too. And so then, don't be afraid to ask for help. Number four, it's okay to enjoy somebody or something. It's okay to laugh. It's okay. It's not that you're forgetting. It's not that you're not grieving. See, grieving is a journey. It's a long journey. And when the incident first happens, you go into that journey, that journey, you go into that tunnel, and you stay in that tunnel until you work through your grief. Grief is a journey. And there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. And that takes, somebody says, well, you know, time hell heals all. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Time with help. Did you hear me? Time with help heals all. You won't ever get over it, but you'll get through it. And that's what counts. Number five, tell God exactly how you feel. I love this one. Tell God exactly. <laughs> You know, somebody says, well, he already knows it. I know he knows it, but you need to know he knows it. And you need to hear yourself say it. Read the book of Job. Read the book of Job. It's, it's about Job. Argue, for, for 38 chapters, Job argues with the Lord. Have you ever argued with the Lord? Have you ever said, Lord, I, I give up. I give up. I don't understand this. I don't know why good things happen to bad people. 
bad things happen to good people. I don't know. Life is not fair. Oh, you think? Right. Life is not fair. Tell God how you feel. <clears throat> Read the Psalms. There are 175 Psalms. And half of them are lamentations. And you know what a lamentation is. Excuse me. <clears throat> a lamentation is a lament. It's a woe. It's a mourning. It's a grieving. And that's what David and the other writers of the Psalms goes through about uh, toward God. And so here he says, don't be afraid to tell God how you feel. Lord, I've had it. I've had it. I don't, I don't know which way to turn. Like James chapter 1, verse 5. James says, if any man lack wisdom. Now, in my Alabama language, uh, that's common sense. If anybody lacks with spiritual common sense, Lord, help me to say the right thing at the right time. And help me to stop sticking my foot in my mouth. And so then, don't be afraid to have a talk with God. I don't, want, I don't mean one of these now lay me down to sleep sort of things. I mean, talk to God like you would talk to your father. Could you do that? Could you talk to your father? Well, that's what, that's what Randy recommends. Number seven, boy, I've, I've got to hurry. What? Why? I don't know why I have to hurry. Uh, be gentle with your consolers. Now, I should have saved that for this one because you need to be kind. You need to be kind with your consolers because I want to give them benefit of the doubt. They mean well. Um, but sometimes, uh, sometimes we don't know what to say. Sometimes we don't know what to say and we just, uh, we just kind of mess it up. Um, and I've heard all kinds, and I, I think I may have told you a long time ago. I mean, after 40 years, I could, you know, I'm going to repeat myself. Um, I remember a youth minister lost his baby, and um, I talked to him later, and we were talking, and I said, well, where are you in your grief? And he said, you know, it's so interesting the way people respond they are hurting along with you, but not, of course, not like you. And he said, they came with like uh, platitudes and scriptures and said, I know the scriptures. You know, I know the scriptures. And then one lady said, well, y'all can have another one. Well, that's the last thing I needed to hear. I didn't want to hear that. He said, Gary, I wanted somebody to put their arm around me and say they love me. Wow. I've been in so many situations over the years where I didn't know what to say, so thankfully I didn't say anything. You can't fix it, but you're there. That's the important thing. You don't have to fix it. They know you can't fix it, so don't try. Just hold them and Tell them you love them. And so this is his advice. And be gentle with your, with your consolers, with those that mean well. And most of us hopefully say the right thing. Uh, listen, there's nothing in this world any better than I'm praying for you. Nothing. All right, that was number six. Number seven. Do something out of love for somebody else. Do something out of love. This, this takes, you know, this is a little time. Once you get over, first when we have bad news, we're in shock. Then we go into suffering. And then when you're in suffering, then you go to surrender. And as you're moving from suffering to uh, surrender, you can start thinking about other people. I don't know the people that have been so unselfish to say, you know, this has happened to me and now I can be a blessing to somebody else. Nobody, and I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings now this morning, but nobody understands a widow like another widow. Nobody. 
Nobody understands a cancer patient like another cancer patient. That was one of the trepidations I had when I started the cancer support group that thankfully to the Lord, I've never had cancer. My wife has, but I have never had cancer. And so I don't know how it feels to take chemo. I don't know how it feels to take radiation. I don't know how it feels to, to fill your body up with that, <laughs> I call it poison, but it's poison enough to kill the cancer, but it has so many side effects. And so, you know, to, to get to a point, don't rush it, but you'll get to a point where you can say, I can be a blessing to somebody else. That they're, they're, I've got a ministry now that I didn't ask for. I've got a ministry that I can help somebody else with. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day, uh, and they said something about losing both of their parents. And, uh, and I, I didn't mean to do one up on you. I said, but I, I, I uh, had the same experience. I buried mother, uh, buried dad first, and then I buried mother, and I stood between those two graves, and I realized that I was an orphan for the first time in my life. And that's been a long time ago, and I didn't like it then, and I don't like it now. But there comes a time when the healing is helped when you help somebody else. You get a blessing out of it. So you can do something for somebody else. Here's a here, number number eight is so important, and just hang on. I'll get to my lesson when I when I want to. Uh, number eight: uh, Try not to withdraw. This is real, and I see it every day. And I try to discourage it. Don't go to that bedroom and lock the door. That's not the answer. I know you don't feel like it. I know you, you, you sometimes sleep is a, is a means of uh, escape. And therefore, you need to be careful about that. And so don't withdraw. Call somebody on the phone. If you push just a little bit and get out and, and, and go to lunch with somebody, do something to break that isolation. Uh, men that are a lot smarter than I am are uh, really, really uh, strong in encouraging to watch out for this isolation. Well, I need to hurry before my time runs out. Number nine, let the past flood you with good memories. I read a statement years ago when I first started preaching. It says, memory is a gift of God that even death cannot destroy. Uh, memory is a wonderful thing. If you choose to remember the right thing, if you choose, now you can choose and you can leave your mind, like Paul said in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, set your minds that are, set your minds that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. In other words, your mind will be where you put it. If you put it in the gutter, it'll stay in the gutter. If you put it up above where Christ is, it'll stay there. So let your mind be flooded with good things. That will help heal. Number 10, uh, draw strength and hope from your faith. You see, you've got to work along with the Lord with this. The Lord will not leave you. There are promises, and there are over 2,000 promises in the Bible. And in Hebrews chapter 13, he talks about this. And he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I can't, brethren, I can't tell you of the numbers that have told me over the years I couldn't have made it had it not been for the Lord. That, you see, the Lord's there when all of us have gone home. The Lord is there in the middle of the night, and He will stay there. And so then lean on your faith, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And that's the reason reading the Bible, meditating on God's Word, every day. Read the book of Philippians. Philippians is a book about joy. And Paul is in prison. He's in a prison in Rome, and he's writing a letter about joy. And he's basically saying in those four chapters, don't let anything or anybody rob you of your joy. 
Now, that's not happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. Happiness is a phone call. Happiness is somebody uh, acting ugly, blessing you out. Happiness can be good or bad. Joy is a relationship that's based on principle that nothing can shake. That I'm, like Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We don't care what's happened. Well, I got to hurry. Um, number 11, if you wish, you may go to the graveside and talk. That's fine. That's okay. No, you're not losing your mind. It's all right to go to the cemetery. How long? As long as it does good. As long as you get some peace and some comfort. And then when that stops, then stop going. Number uh, 10, that was number uh, 11. Number 12, remember that you are normal. Isn't that good? Randy is with the Lord, and he's been with the Lord for quite a while now, but his work carries on. Now, let me mail you one of these. All you got to do is call 881 4651. The machine is working. Give them your name and your dre and address and we'll mail you yours today. This will do worlds of good for a lot of people. Well, I didn't get to my lesson. All right, now you've got to watch next week. Even over, even though it's be after, after Thanksgiving, we're still going to talk about the need to have a biblical Thanksgiving. Till next week, may God bless you is my prayer. Abundant Living, a ministry of the Mayfair Church of Christ. A place where children are loved, where families are strengthened, where teens learn to serve, and grandparents are special. Mayfair, truly a family place for all ages. The Mayfair Church of Christ, we're saving a special place for you. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the